Hello, crime solvers. This is Miss Taylor. And this afternoon for our reading block, we have an exciting lesson that you're going to be part of today. I know this is kind of creepy place here. So um, let's go ahead and get started so we know what we're going to do today. So I'm going to share my screen so both of us can get out of this place. I know it's kind of creepy. Oh, good. That's awesome. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I hope you had a fantabulous lunch. And today you are going to take the word love, the absent author bend one vocabulary test today. So remember, you will find everything in Canvas. You are going to, I'm going to move this out of our way for just a second. We, you are going to go into um, Canvas, into Word Work, and then into Modules, and then you're going to see the Ms. Taylor's Word Love test directions. If you need those again, you probably don't. And then there's the test. Do your very, very best. Remember, Mr. Young's group, do not submit until you let an adult check your responses, not for, for correctness, but to make sure that you um, have completed all of your words. So that's it. I'm going to go ahead and say you can pause the video until we're finished with our word love. It shouldn't take you more than 10 minutes and then we're going to get started. So go ahead and pause the video. Good luck. I know you'll do great. Well, welcome back, crime solvers. Today, you are going to listen to a friend of mine. Well, really not a friend, but she's Miss Jones, and she's going to read to you chapters five and six of the Read Aloud. So you can come up to the rug, find your spot with your partner, because Miss Canner might want to pause or Mr. Young might want to pause every so often to go ahead and talk about adding to our chart, adding to clues on the left side, and maybe we might even meet some more suspects. So um, I'm going to let them go through. I'm not going to, um, they can just go ahead and let the um, video play. All right, so enjoy. Good morning, boys and girls. All right, you're going to take a movement break. I know that was exciting, chapter five and chapter six. Um, so I know that was exciting. You're going to take a three-minute movement break. Here's the Grinch. You're going to do some freeze dances. Remember, stand in your, your own square and then do some movement breaks. All right, I'm going to go through that as well. So they'll go ahead and take you through it. Maybe get watch it on YouTube because I'm going to quickly get through this so we can get to our lesson. Oh, I know that was exciting, wasn't it? Okay, now we're back. Prime solvers. Okay, so what we're going to be doing today, we're going to have a session for, this is what I need you to have out. You need your binder, your pencil, and your large post-it notes. Get ready to work, do some work with you and your partner. Find your partner chapter book, your mystery chapter book that you and your partner are reading. Let's decide. Probably you can get through two chapters today. I'm pretty confident that you and your partner can get through two. So don't forget to put your um, any new clues, any new suspects. Remember, stop and um, write who you think is going to be the criminal, who... Um, who did the crime, crime solver. Don't forget to just stop and jot that down as well. All right, here we go. Readers, I've been watching very carefully as you read. I know that some of you are close to finishing um, your first mystery book. As I watch you, I've been thinking hard about what I could teach you that would raise the level of your reading. I decided it was time for me to teach you a very important lesson. All right, and. I'm going to go in right now, ladies and gentlemen, and instead of looking at me in my creepy space, there we go, because sometimes I think that's kind of distracting. First, I have an important question for you. Think about a time that something outside of your school was hard for you, maybe a particular 
part of playing basketball or baseball or jumping rope, maybe playing a video game or something. Now, my question is, what did you do to deal with that challenge? Think about it now. Now, when you have something in mind that was hard for you and what you had to deal with the challenge, put a thumb up. All right, waiting for some more thumbs. All right, tell your partner really quickly, what was hard for you outside of school and how did you deal with that challenge? I've told you this before, but you know, I had a challenge of learning to ride my bike. But you know what? My dad helped me and we got out there and I just kept trying, even though I fell off a time or two or three or four or five, I kept going. Readers, when I said turn and tell your partner what you did to deal with the challenge, you know what? I didn't hear anyone say, well, I didn't do anything. I just kind of sat there. You know, when something tricky came your way, you didn't just shrug it off and give up. You didn't do that. Instead, you all named your things you did. You took some action. Reading is going to be the same way as those things. It's the same as anything else. When you get to something tricky, a new book, a new tricky part in the book you're reading, when it comes your way, you just can't shrug it off and give up. You need to do something. So today, I want to teach you that you will come to tricky parts in the book. It's going to happen. And you're going to come to tricky parts in your new book and the book you're doing right now. And when you notice a text that feels tricky, you just can't sit back and do nothing. You need to take action and use strategies to deal with the problem. Now, mystery books are no different than any other books. You can expect that there's going to be some tricky parts. Maybe the whole book will be tricky or maybe some parts of it will be. You know, right now, I want you to go ahead and we're going to pause the video for just a second. You're going to put your finger on part of your mystery book that was maybe a little bit challenging for you or a part that might be challenging for another reader if you can't find one for yourself. All right, come back. Why do you think this part was tricky? Or why might it be tricky for someone else? Think about that. What makes reading mysteries tricky for you? Is it when there's lots of different suspects and it's hard to keep track of the clues about each suspect? Is it when time shifts and you have a hard time knowing when a part of the story is taking place or when the setting switches and you're not sure where the story is taking place now or, you know, the setting changes from this place to this place, like to the, from Dink's house to the book nook to the airport to the taxi command post? I don't know. OK. Turn quickly and share what makes mysteries tricky for you. OK, crime solvers, let's come back together. Now we're going to look at. What makes. What was tricky for two third graders? Now, these third graders you may or may not know, probably not. And you can see if you agree with these, that there are also challenges for you. Then, and this is the really important part, you're going to think about what action these readers could take to deal with these challenges. Remember, when you encounter a challenge, you can't just shrug it off and say, oh, well, I'm not going to do anything. You have to do something. So here's Michelle, she's a third grader. And this is what she said was tricky for her. I think a tricky part of a mystery is the beginning. There are so many characters and clues and you don't know if things are important. That's true. That's right. Do you agree with Michelle that the beginnings of mysteries tend to be a little bit tricky? All right, let's look at Richards. When people are talking about the author and the author doesn't name, doesn't give the name of the character who said the dialogue. Like it doesn't say said Dink or said Mr. Paskey. It just gives the dialogue. 
Yep. Do some of you expect, uh, experience that same challenge? It looks like some of you have found it hard when the author includes dialogue, but does it tag who said it? Hmm. So we agree that there are some tricky parts, but we can't just name the tricky parts. Readers have to do something. The challenge that I'm posing today is this. How can you, hmm, how can we help Michelle and Richard take action? Now, this is a very hard question because there aren't always easy answers about how to deal with tricky parts. You have to squeeze your brain really hard. Now, not too hard that it pops out your head. That would be awful and inappropriate for school. <laughs> and you have to almost invent a strategy. To invent a strategy, you could think of a strategy you already know, or you may combine a couple of strategies together, or you may even think of a brand new way to figure out a tricky part all on your own. So what we're going to do, we're going to divide the class up into two. And this may need to, after I give the directions, we're going to pause the video and we're half the class are going to read where Michelle said she had a problem. And then half the class is going to read the excerpt where Richard said he had his difficulty. It was the tricky part. So we're going to pause, we're going to distribute the passages. Um, and then you are going to try to come up with some strategies for these two. You might want to write it on the back um, of the paper. You might want to fold this paper in half, and then you can write on the top half for Michelle or on the bottom half for Richard. And here's the thing. If you have time, you could do Michelle. Group one's going to do Michelle first. If there's time, go ahead and go to Richard. And the same thing for group two. Group two, you're going to start with Richard first. And then if you have time, go on to Michelle. But you're going to come try to come up with some strategies to help these two. Now, remember, we want to help them deal with some tricky parts. All right, we're going to pause right here, crime solvers. We're going to divide you up into two groups. But everyone is going to be getting both excerpts but just make sure you're reading the right one. Group one, Michelle, group number two, remember you're reading Richard. Maybe one teacher can help the Michelle group, one teacher help the Richard group. And then if there's time, then flip flop. I don't know, you, you teacher, give teachers give as much time as you think it'll take. All right, go ahead and pause the video and then come back when you're done. Hey, welcome back, guys. Yeah, readers, that's not easy work, right? I know that they heard, the teachers probably heard quite a few suggesting strategies. And I have a chart for you that kind of like I came up with and some friends helped me come up with this. And then I'm going to share these with you. So let's think about it. if you come to a tricky part, you could try to. All right, on the left hand side, let's look. If this part of mystery reading is tricky, like the beginning has lots of suspects and clues and you aren't sure what to do, let's see what we could do. Ooh, swipe. No swiping though, because swiper's not in the classroom. <laughs> you could reread to pick up more clues, talk to a partner about that part, Use symbols or color code to keep track of each character. Don't write in your book, though, please. Don't color in your book. Jot down the clues and sort them later. Ooh, that sounds like going up sorting things. Keep reading forward and then go back and reread for clues that you didn't know were clues until you looked back. Sometimes we don't know something's a clue until we get further on in the book and something happened at the beginning. We say, wait a minute. Do you remember back at the beginning when? That might happen and you might want to write those things down. What about if there's dialogue and doesn't have any tag doesn't tell you who said it oh another swipe well you could read that part aloud and try to sound like the character i love to do you know when miss taylor reads i love to give voices to the characters you could reread that part to figure out what makes sense you can think about how a character usually talks and then you can look for a pattern you know what usually people take turns in conversations readers you know what? This ended up being an incredible list. 
These were invented to address two really big challenges. Now you can try these out. If you come across um, those sorts of tricky parts in your book, earlier you thought about your own challenges in the mystery reading. I hope you've already started thinking about some strategies to deal with those. Now, when you go read today and whenever, remember that when you come across some tricky, something tricky, you will, you're not going to shrug it off. You're going to take action and you are going to try to solve the problem. Here's one response from another third grader. This was, this was Sam, not Sammy, but just Sam. When I have lots of suspects, it is hard because when one by one a suspect comes, it is hard to keep track of the suspects. Yep, that's true. All right, crime solvers, as you read today, think hard about what kinds of parts are tricky and what to do when you encounter those. You can talk with your partner about those parts, try to invent some more strategies together. All right, crime solvers. We're back. We're back. And I need to hurry because I need to get out of this room. Are you ready, crime solvers? Well, I know it's going to be a great day today. Happy reading. Off you go.